In this video, I'm going to look at installing the Spider6 ID on Linux. Before getting started, I'm going to have a look at the user folder. So in the user folder, there is the binary folder and there's the library folder. So when we open up the terminal as a user, it's going to search in the binary folder for the binary. So for example, if we drag and drop the apt binary across, this is the advanced package tool. And if we drag and drop the clear binary ac across, this clears the terminal. So if we type in apt or clear, then essentially what we're doing is referencing the binary. So the Linux terminal uses the scripting language bash by default. So if we type in bash, it appears nothing happens because it basically just continues using bash in the next command line. What we can do is create a shell script. And if we type in bash and then provide the shell script as a command line argument, it's going to execute this script. Notice we've got the file location in the terminal and the tilde means you're in the user's home folder. So if I right click the documents folder and select open in terminal, notice that it's now in home slash documents. And if I type in bash um, followed by script.sh, it's going to launch this bash shell script. So the bash command change di directory can be used to change the directory. And notice that I've changed the directory to documents. And if I want to change it back to my user profile, I can change the directory back to the user profile just using the tilde. So another programming language pre-installed in Linux is Python. And if we input Python 3.12, notice the prompt changes to a Python prompt, and we can type in some Python code. So if we import the datetime module and check out where its file is, we see it's in the user library folder. So essentially this user library folder is associated with the user um, binary um, Python. So we can physically inspect the folder using files. And now let's have a look at important another module, email. And let's have a look at its file. So email is essentially a folder containing multiple script files. And when it's imported, the initialization file is imported. Now, if we attempt to import NumPy as NP, we get this module not found error. And this is because the user Python has no site packages. So it's only got the standard libraries and doesn't have third party um, packages. So if I go to the documents folder and create a Python script, I can launch this Python script using the user Python and we see the, the print statements being executed. So if I go to other locations, notice that there's a binary folder and a library folder. These are essentially the system-wide um, binary and library folders. So when you prefix a command with sudo superuser do, you're going to look for the binaries in this binary folder instead. So for example, we can use the system-wide bash to execute the shell script. And if we explore the system-wide binary folder, we can see that there's um, the system-wide Python 3.12. So this is the system Python and should be considered as part of the operating system. So the system-wide Python can be used to launch the Python script. If we import a module and have a look at its file, notice that it's in a system-wide library folder.
So in a system, white Python should be considered as part of the operating system and shouldn't be used for development. If we want to get started with Python, um, it's recommended to install an IDE. And one of the best beginner IDEs is Spider. So if we download Spider from Spider's releases on GitHub, we can see that it's a shell script file. So we can launch it using bash. And then if we press enter to continue, we can type in yes to accept the license agreement. And then we can type in enter to install it in its default location. And then once it's installed, Spider will automatically launch. So notice that the Spider installer has um, updated the bash recall file. So the bash recall file is used by the Linux terminal and essentially contains a list of locations that this terminal should look for um, binaries. So in this case, it's telling it to look for the binary in the spider install folder. So when we type in spider, it finds the binary and launches spider. The spider installer will also have created a application icon and we can go ahead and pin this. So if we open up spider and we go to help and then dependencies, we should see that spider is installed with all its mandatory and optional dependencies. So under the hood, it's got its own Python 3.11 environment. And we can see this if we import date time and have a look at its file. So this Spider 6 has an environment subfolder and then Spider runtime, and then it's got its own binary folder. And here you can see the, the Python. And it's got its own associated libraries folder. So if we look at Python 3.11 libraries, we can see that we've got this datetime.py. So if we go ahead and import email and have a look at emails file, we see that it's this email folder here and it's this initialization script file. Notice that this spider environment has its own site packages and this contains third party modules such as numpy. So we can import numpy as np and we can have a look at its file and we see that it's this initialization script file. If we have a look at numpy.random we can see that we've got this random subfolder and in this subfolder there is an initialization script file. We have a look at one of the other commonly used libraries, matplotlib. We can see that there is the initialization script file. So if we type in import matplotlib as mpl and have a look at this file, we can see that this is the initialization script file. Typically, the pyplot module is used from matplotlib. So we import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and we can have a look at its file. This Python environment also has pandas. So we can import pandas as pd and we can have a look at its file. So one library that's not available in Spider site packages is Seaborn. So if we want to use libraries that aren't associated with Spider's um, internal environment, we're going to need to create our own Python environment. And we can do this with Miniconda. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and download Miniconda and I'm going to install it. Once again, this is a bash script. 
So press enter to continue, press Q to quit scrolling through the license agreement, and put yes, press enter to install in the default location, and input yes to update the bash recall file. So now that the bash recall file is updated, it's going to automatically select the base Python environment. And the base Python environment for Miniconda essentially exists um, for the Conda binary. So the Conda binary is the package manager. So Conda can be used to initialize the terminal. So drag the Conda binary over and type in init and then dash dash all. If you want to reverse, then type in dash dash reverse before dash dash all. Since this is already initialized, what I'm going to do is just type in conda and update conda and make sure the conda package manager is at the latest version. Notice that there's the environment subfolder. And if we type in the conda create and then dash n, followed by the name of the environment, followed by dash c, followed by the name of the channel to install packages, which is the community channel Conda Forge. We can go ahead and install pa the packages that we want, such as Python, Seaborn, and some dependencies for pandas, mainly to read um, and write files. And put Y in order to proceed. And then we can activate this Python environment. So now we're using this Python environment instead of base. And we're going to use the Conda package manager to install spider kernels, once again from the community Conda Forge channel. If we want to update this Python environment, we can use Conda update, specify the channel as Conda Forge, and then type in dash dash all. Okay, so now we can open up spider. And if we go to Tools and then Preferences, we can select Python Interpreter and in the drop down list, we can select our Spider Environment Python. So notice that this hasn't updated the environment yet. So if I import Seaborn as SNS, I get this module not found error. If I restart the kernel, it's still using the original Python environment. So I actually need to close spider and relaunch it in order to use the conda python environment that has seaborn installed so notice at the bottom now it says conda spider environment and then python 3.12.5 and i can import seaborn as sns to check for updates for spider select help and check for updates note that you may need to change your python environment back to the internal Python environment for the updater to work correctly. I've not tested this because there's not any updates for Spider 6 at, at this moment in time. Okay, to finish up this video, I'm going to test the uninstaller for Spider 6. So if I go into the Spider 6 folder, So, so recall it's in this dot local, then spider6. There's this uninstall spider dot shell. And we can use bash and then launch this. So it's going to remove the entries from the bash recall. It's going to remove the desktop shortcut and it's going to delete spider6. So if we refresh the bash recall file, we see there's no entry for spider. We see the spider six shortcut has been removed. It's no longer pinned to the dash and the spider six folder has been deleted. And if you're interested in learning how to use Python with spider, I've started creating a video series. So I went through the built-in classes with spider six and I've got some older videos on the data science libraries with Spider 5. Um, I'm likely to update these in the future.